Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I recently made a move to New Mexico, which was about 950 miles from my previous residence. And I used a U-Haul and a car dolly. So this video will cover uh, what I think is important about using a car dolly. And that's how the ramps are locked into place and how you want to drive with the car towed and drive with no vehicle on it. All right, when you go put the car up on the dolly, you can lay the straps like that or you can lay the straps like that. It really doesn't matter. What matters is how you put the straps over the tire once you get the car in place. Now, of course, you do want it hooked up to the truck. You want to hook your wire harness up there. You don't want to forget that. And this thing right here just cranks down. If you're going to step away from this trailer or your truck, you want to always make sure you got a lock on your truck. And you always want to make sure your trailer is locked in here. Because you don't want nobody just unhooking it and driving away with it. So... Once you drive the car up on the ramps, you got to make sure that the tire fits all the way in to the pockets there on both sides. And once you got the car in the pocket, you want to grab your, your tire harness and straighten it out the right way and run it up over the tire. And once you get it over the tire, I'll show you how to, it's over the tire now, make sure it's as even as you can on the inside there, okay, then you bring the middle of it, have it like that to bring it down to the latch, and I'll show you how to do this tie down. Now on this tie down, you want it open. Then you thread the rope through the tie down and you bring the strap down, not tight, just take the slack off. Now you want to crank this and let this take the slack off because you want it to go around at least once to lock the strap in. Now that the strap is locked in, you want to tighten this pretty much until you can't tighten it anymore and you'll hear the tire creaking listen then once you hear that creaking you locked it all the way in like that now because this is material this is going to stretch over the next uh, 100 miles or so so the first time you stop you want to come and crank that a couple of times now when I drove I had to tighten that thing up about three or four times before it was actually tight. But here, you can see how tight it is. You drive a couple hundred miles, this is gonna stretch, and it's gonna be loose. Then you just tighten it back up, because you don't want this stretching so much that you get your uh, car falling off the dolly. Once you got the wheel strapped in, you don't wanna do like I did. I forgot to push the ramp back up and lock it in place. I drove about, I guess about three quarters of a mile before I realized something was making a lot of noise. Then I jumped out, realized I had those out, came down here, grabbed that thing. Because it was dragging on the ground, I almost burnt myself. So once you get the, uh, the wheel strapped in, you want to go ahead, lift this up, and slide it in. Just push it in. I need both hands to do it. To lock that in place. And you want that pin up there to lock in that hole and you'll be fine. You won't have to worry about it coming out. And this is the passenger side locked into place now. Now I'm ready to drive. Now, again, you don't want to pull one of these cars that's rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive unless you're ready to disconnect the drive shaft because it'll mess up the transmission and possibly the gearbox for the drive shaft. 
Now, one thing you need to do each time you stop to gas up, besides check the oil on your U-Haul, you don't want your U-Haul broke down on the interstate, is check your tire straps. These straps are tie-down straps. They can hold probably 10,000 pounds a piece. But the thing about it is, since it's a material, it stretches. So you want to come under here and see if you got any slack. This is my third or fourth time I'm checking them, and this is the first time I don't have any slack. But if you got slack, you need to go ahead and pull this and ratchet it a couple times to tighten it. And when you got it ratcheted, it locks on these teeth, and when you close that back, you want to make sure the tip of that hook is all the way up there. That locks it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and check the other side and get back with you shortly. Okay, this side has a little bit of slack, not much, so I'm going to click it one time. Should be good. You heard it click lock it back in place you got to do that every time you stop or you can risk your car trying to come out of this dolly which is not a good thing when I think about towing a car with a dolly like this I think of somebody hanging off a cliff with somebody's hand holding their hand uh, that's how nervous I am about it but uh, you should only use this with front-wheel drive cars if you have an all-wheel drive car or a car that's wheel-wheel drive Unless you disconnect the drive shaft, you shouldn't use this kind of dolly because this kind of dolly can uh, yeah, cause your rear end to spin and it can cause damage to your rear end. I know a guy that drug his Volvo 960 like this. He put it on one of these type dollies. He put it in neutral and he thought that was okay. It destroyed the transmission. So this is only for front wheel drive cars unless you're going to uh, disconnect the axle or something. Another thing good to, to do on your stops is to make sure your, your ball hitch is still tight. And don't do like I did, drive off and forget to uh, hook up your light cable. I did that uh, and figured it out at my second stop. But you want to plug that in make sure your trailer lights are working. Okay, whenever you have these uh, dollies on here, when you're ready to get it off, you reach your hand down here and push and squeeze this forward and crank this all the way open and then it releases. Once you got it back like that, it's released. Then you just wiggle the, the latch around until you can pull the, the rope out and now it's released. Then you pull the webbing from the strap back behind the tire and lay it down then you gotta release the ramp over here let me show you how to do that okay these are the ramps that you ride up on you pull this out and then you slide it back with your hand it's best to have gloves when you're doing this let me go ahead and slide this back set on the ground okay it slid back onto the ground and you can have this webbing on the ramp or off it doesn't matter now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side once you got the ramps down on both sides the straps off on both sides go ahead and back the car off of it nice and slow if you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.